Hey, before you have the visitors <laughs> over for the holidays, you want to dance? But you also want to add sangria recipes to your holiday table. That's true. Master mixologist Natasha Velez is here to show us how to make a mold red wine sangria. It's like taking winter and summer and smashing them together. Yes, yeah, so I wanted to bring a sangria, but then it's getting a little bit colder. And I was like, well, you know, we have so many opportunities to make like a warm beverage yeah. right now that brings everybody together. Mm -hmm. So kind of like a mold wine sangria was the option. Um, I decided to use um, spices from Spice House, which is local here to Chicago. They have a mulling spice set yeah. that works perfectly. You don't have to like source what's the perfect balance between what. Um, we have Ichiko Shoshu, which we talked about before, but it's this Japanese is- Japanese spirit. Yep. It's a Japanese spirit. It's native to Japan. We're using the lower ABV today okay. to kind of like bring a little bit of a balance. We don't want to make it super boozy. Like it's a punch essentially, right? Yeah. So you want to make it something that you can enjoy the whole night and not be like, you know, leaving the dishes out. And you don't want to drink too fast. And sometimes when you got the higher alcohol and the fruit in there. It's like, Makes oh, this is delicious. Yeah, but yeah. I also wanted to give it a little bit of a spike, so I added aviation gin. I think that these two work perfectly because um, the Indian sarsaparilla, the lavender in this, and then you have like the umami, the turo mm -hmm. barley in this. I think it just works perfectly with wine and all these mulling spices, okay, right? Okay, and what type of wine did you use? Um, I'm using a Pinot Noir just okay. because Perfect. I wanted something a little bit more um, on the softer side. Normally, sangria will call for a Rioja since it's like a Spanish yeah. um, type. Mm -hmm. um, of a punch. Okay. But um, so how do we get started? So I use a whole bottle. And you're using now. Do you normally do this in like a slow cooker like this, or do you do, can do it on the sto stove too, right? So you can do it at the stove. I use a slow cooker just because it keeps it warm, and I don't put mm. it on. Um, any other setting than keep warm. So, oh, got it. And also, um, then it takes up. You don't have to worry about taking up counter or space on the yeah. your cooktop. On your cooktop, yeah. because at this time you're like Making essential. Making everything, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I use that um, a whole bottle. I use a cup of the shoshu. It's ready. It's cup. Oh yeah. We're done. Hey, look at that. And it smells so good. I love I know, the fact you can that smell it. it. Yeah. yeah. It's nice to have. You know, when you're I think it's the cooking for the holidays. That just kind of really mm -hmm. make you feel like, oh, okay, this is going to be wholesome going down. Yeah. yeah. Wholesome drinking. It's yeah, sure. It's, it's familiar. Of course, it's wholesome. And so we got to talk about the aviator yeah. gin. Okay, so Ryan Reynolds. Yeah. Yes. This. He's and, uh, delicious. I'm sure the, the <laughs> gin's going to be delicious too. <laughs> so I'm using three quarters of a cup of that. Okay. Um, but yeah, um, the really good thing about this gin that works perfectly, it's that it has juniper in the back seat, which works well with all of the spices, but it also also has um, in his sarsaparilla, bitter orange peels that kind of like does work with the shoshu for this to be a perfect balance. You know what would be the perfect balance is if Ryan Reynolds was in my kitchen putting it together. Ooh, <laughs> I mean, uh, you just say a lot. So we got some orange juice. Um, I use uh, anything from a quarter cup to half a cup. Okay. And I use two cups of apple cider. Mm. Um, you can get that locally. Um, mm -hmm. We're getting a lot of really good apple cider yeah. from Michigan. Mm -hmm. It's important to use uh, lemon juice because it kind of like breaks the acidity. Um, it brings the acidity it puts all these flavors together okay. and it kind of like adds a little bit of an umph to it. And how um, much of that did you use? About a cup? I use about half a cup of okay. that. Okay. And then I use a quarter cup of maple syrup. Ooh, I was wondering where that sweetness was going to yeah. come in. At. Yeah, so once you do that, um, I bring a little bit of oranges, pears, apples, and pomegranate seeds oh, and I add so all of it in there. And it can just simmer all day, right? Yep. Well, it's not even simmering, it's just staying The more warm. it simmers, the better it tastes, right? Oh, yeah. yeah. So, like, I would let it simmer at least an hour, but at, like, three to four hours, that's when you're it's at like the perfect, perfect spot. Mm -hmm. And then we add the mulling spices. Ooh. It's already good. put together for you, so let's go. Cool. Cool. You don't, have, you don't to. have to worry about anything else than just, like, cook, and now you have a free stove top to yourself. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you can, you know, And you can bop between, it. like, going to the stove and then get yourself something to drink. Go to the stove, <laughs> get something to drink, right? So I have one that I made yesterday for y'all. And I love mm. this. I love this. This is yeah, so Yeah, and you cool. can have, like, different ways of presenting it. I love garnishing my oranges with uh, some cloves. Yeah. I add some cranberries. You can add pomegranate seeds. I also like adding um, cinnamon mm. because it keeps changing the flavor in there. Mm-hmm. And I'm just sitting here because I'm freezing here in the studio. You're always freezing. Oh, thank you. I know, right? Thank you. All right, Natasha. Cheers. 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 Cheers lady. You always Happy holidays. holidays. Happy holidays. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.
That is so good. good. I dig it a little bit. Oh, a little clove, yeah. clove in there. Mm, that, that is, is so, so good. good. So do you have to strain that, obviously, to get all yes. of that out of there, right? So depending on how you want to strain it, I usually use a little one, and I will individually strain as I scoop. But you can also grab a bigger scooper and, then just... and pass it to another um, vessel. Mm -hmm. But since you're normally going to be scooping out of there, yeah. I recommend a small one on top of the cup that you're pouring into. That's a good idea. Okay, this is a good Thanks way to Tasha. I like this each cup yeah, recipe. This, yeah, this is really good one. Well, we like this one. one. Mm -hmm. Thank All you, right. Tasha.